Yo, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the channel. This is the RTH Podcast, man. I'm your host, Nephew, and I'm checking in, man. So I got a little back and forth between Jamel Charlo and Tim Zhu, man. I'm going to let you guys hear these guys go back and forth just to kind of keep you guys interested in fights like this. First and foremost, bro, this is one of the biggest fights of the year if they can get it in right now we all know that jamil charlo is dealing with a hand injury well he's healing from a hand injury and i'm pretty sure he's already in training camp and working at fist and uh the possibility of him taking a tune-up fight is high but it, it ain't very high when you have a guy like jamil charlo saying he just want to fight the best guys out there and he don't care man uh, when he's sitting on top of the hill he the man in charge and so he don't want to be holding people up he just want to fight whoever they put in front of him now you guys can say that that's bs i don't believe it's bs because he have to prove that otherwise in order for me to think that it's bs in the meantime between time what he says is it's law at this point until he proves something else right now i will go on a limb and say i do think he should take a tune-up fight for tim zoo um just so he can make sure that this is good and ready to go um, giving him the remainder of the year to maybe see Tim Zhu about November, December, if necessary. Um, I'm pretty sure Charlo will try to get in the ring about August or September. So we'll just have to wait and see what he decides to do and wait and see if that fist is ready to go. Um, in the meantime, between time, bro, before we get into this clip, I'm going to go out on the limb and say, bro, I don't know if Charlo can beat Tim Zhu. And uh, this is not me saying he's going to lose. It's not what I'm saying. I just don't know if he's going to win, bruh, because um, when it comes down to, like, I've been thinking about this fight right now for the past few days. Like I, like I explained in my last video, the news in the sport of boxing is just faint right now, just due to the fact that uh, Canelo Alvarez is online. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when Canelo is out, it's kind of hard to do anything in the media that's not surrounded by Canelo Alvarez. Is it the biggest fight for Canelo? No, bruh, it's not the biggest fight for Canelo. But it's still Canelo coming to the ring and with all of the, the, the parties and it being Cinco de Mayo and the whole nine. Yeah, man, it's, it's Canelo's time of year. So it's not much news coming on. And I appreciate you guys for sticking around. So after I covered the Canelo situation, I was pretty much dry, bro. I ain't really had nothing else to do. You know, I covered as much as I could for y'all, bro. And that was it. I started thinking about this fight, bro. I was like, man, dog, Tim Zhu is tough bruh like power brute strength has a strong chin he can close the distance very quickly um he's going to lay the hammer down bruh especially if he can get you on the ropes which is one thing that i think that jamel charlo uh has a bit of a problem with if you can catch jamel charlo on the ropes you can pretty much have your way with him to a certain degree now don't get it twisted he gets aggressive there but i also think that he 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 gets stagnant he all he, he stands there too long and that could just be his bravado that just could be his aggression his ability to believe in himself to just stay there you know what i'm saying and say fuck it you know it is what it is i'm here now so i'm just gonna work through this situation or it could be a situation where like in the castano fight he was just being pushed into that corner and he had no way to get around what Costano was doing even if you go back and see right we we were to say well he knocked out Costano go back to that fight and see where he was standing when he knocked out Costano he was on the ropes literally which is a, a spot where we can if we were to put a side by side between Costano and Tim Zhu right we put the side by side I do think Costano has the ability to force you into that scenario of going to the ropes. And I also think that Tim Zhu has the ability to force you into that uh, scenario of going to the ropes. The difference is power. That's the difference. Is once Costano gets you there, he's going to give you all he can give you in, in the point of power and speed. But versus a guy like uh, Jamel Charlo, he didn't really land like he did because i think he flashbanged him like back to back uh at one point in the first fight he 
flashbang them. Boom. And you can see Charlo get a little bit lightheaded. He banged him again. Boom. He can get lightheaded. But Charlo makes it back to his, his corner after that round. If he get flashbanged by Tim Zhu, bruh, Tim Zhu got the power to put him out. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not bad mouthing Charlo, bro, because I do think Charlo has a, the ability to fight. He ain't a boxer to me. I think he's a fighter. And so I do think he has the ability to fight. I don't think that Tim Zhu is is intimidated, but he could be. You know, you got somebody barking at you like that, and it's coming from a gentleman that you know is like that. Like you see what I'm saying? It's one, it's one thing when somebody barking at you, but they're a chihuahua. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, you act like you're hard, but you're not hard. And it's another thing when you, you talk to somebody that's barking at you and it's a big-ass uh, uh, cane corso. It's a, it's a, that's, that's a totally different bark. A chihuahua bark and a cane corso, them two, two totally different barks. Them two totally different dogs. And one going to put some fear in you, the other one might not. You see what I'm saying? So I do think it might be a small level of intimidation there that's playing into this scenario, but it might not be. So I'm gonna let these two gentlemen uh, talk. These are just the sound bites I took from the interview that they had. This was prior to uh, these two gentlemen, uh, their first fight. It was prior to that. They were supposed to get into the ring. Of course, Charlo suffers a hand injury um, slightly after this situation. But the, the conversation still, to me, was uh, respectable and, and legitimate enough, um, as, as well as relevant enough to bring this to you guys because first and foremost i know everybody want to hear something about these two and uh when people are quiet on social media and when they're quiet in interviews and things like that even though charlo just had an interview um when people are quiet bro that means they're training and i looked up tim zoo he didn't have nothing to say i looked up charlo he just had an interview with his brother um on the podcast so that that's that's this, this goes to show that these guys are getting ready for each other or maybe charlo is just getting ready to go back into the ring so i'm gonna <clears throat> excuse me i'm gonna play this uh clip and i'm gonna get back to you guys after the clip just so i can close this thing out but in the meantime between time man i want to know what you guys think about these two who do you guys see winning this fight uh, do you guys think that Tim Zoo is going to be too much for Jamel Charlo? Do you guys think that Jamel Charlo is just going to walk through Tim Zoo? I need to know all of that in the comment section below, man. And we're going to go to this little interview right fast, and I'll be back with my commentary after that. Let's go. I don't usually believe in fate. I think destiny and fate is uh, something that you you have to work for. But, you know, for me, I feel like, uh, again, Mel said it himself. It doesn't matter about the bloodline. It's, it's what you yourself put into it you know and i've been eyeing this fight out for for maybe two years now man it's been in the back of my mind i've been looking studying uh obsessing over it there was four different mandatories that he had to fight and i was pushing him man i was i was i was pushing it that hard that, that this is the fight that i want this is the test that i need in my career the thing about it if he studied me he's uh he, he realized that he's never the same fighter every fight he's different and with that being said it's gonna be really really hard i don't care how much you study me or the old fights or what you see on youtube or what you see in these videos i know how to adjust i make adjustments real precisely and um i take care of myself i take care of my brain my body my mind and how i how i flow through every fight and every round it's important for me i'm very powerful in both hands and that's not what i'm really focused on i focus on speed i focus on ability agility athleticism i grew up fighting my whole life y'all talking about his daddy and all of this stuff my dad was a, a whole boxing killer himself in in and out the ring you know what i'm saying and so what i possess is just undeniable after his fight with castana he was he's sitting in the press conference he's just like Kazoo, Kazoo, and then he's going off for different reporters. I was like, man, this guy just won the Undisputed World Championship, man. You'd, you'd have a smile on your face at least. Hey, I'm about my business, man. I ain't arrogant. I'm humble. And I've been through humble lessons in life. I've been places and things that he's never done. I'm not enjoying my fight with your Australian media asking me questions. If y'all wanted to ask me questions after the fight, y'all should have did that and tried to call call up and see if how much it's going to cost to get an interview with me. Not no come <laughs> bomb rushing. Don't bomb rush my 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 moment of enjoying my life and after after going through some some tough rounds and ask me about him. You know, that ain't even the moment of taking a fight. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't take that fight because of that. I took that fight because that's what I have next. 
You know, if they say he up there in the rankings and he he tough and this and this and that, what else am I gonna fight? I'm at the top, dog. I ain't gonna be wait, wasting time. I don't care about you talking about me, arrogant. Y'all might like nice and flashy and good. I'm a black man in America. It ain't easy nowhere in this in this country or this world. So, ain't no arrogance. You're wrong. You're wrong when you come down to that. I wasn't the one that I wasn't the one that questioned you, man. It was just the media. It, so the media. Put then they had no. Hey, they put hey, it back Tim, on me. Like I did something wrong. Hey Tim. One mm. one reporter, Mike Carpenter, one that ESPN guy, the same people you see, it'd make you look better if I was on your top time, top pound for pound. Ain't you fighting the top dog? If you don't believe that I'm top ten, then you a hater just like them. Who? I don't believe that you're pound for pound. I'm correct. I'm pound for pound top ten. And, yeah, I agree with that. I, I agree with that, bro. Mind, that motherfucker's the top ten. I agree with that. I agree that you're in the, right. In the top right. So pound. what I was checking was those haters that were talking crap to me before those fights and I was checking them motherfuckers that didn't believe in me I'm handling my business I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and then they still down me they can't black court me they can't blacklist me my world don't revolve in y'all world I'm out this world baby what's this got anything to do with me man <laughs> you the one that spoke on you spoke on my arrogance you spoke on me worried about a fight see you are you are you losing it you you the one that just said after a fight I should have been enjoying my win right I did enjoy my win I didn't let the world see how I enjoy my win. And yeah, I right. made more money than you ever made outside of boxing. Here's the here's the thing before we it's get to all fight. that money, is it? Right. <laughs> after that fight. Before we huh? get to before we yeah, get to after the media. That fight, I still made more money than you ever made in even your whole career. How do you even know? I know this, baby. I do all mine. Right. I all do right. this. Right. All right. And with that being said, man, uh that you have it. Uh these two gentlemen are definitely um game to fight each other I, i'm gonna say this before we get out of here though I, I did agree with charlo when he said that um the situation after he won versus castano how the aussie uh reporter decided to um bring up tim zoo in that fashion it's kind of like i mean yeah it, it, it made sense to see what would be his next move but it also was kind of tasteless to a certain degree because you know it was a celebration time you know what i'm saying if, if anything you know it, it it was the way that it was stated like I, I think if you go back and you look at it it was the way that it was stated. it was more so raining on his parade than allowing him to just enjoy it and say well you know um you have a possibility of tim zoo you have a possibility of a, a, a lot of other guys you know um is it possible that we'll see you in the ring next with zoo or are you gonna take some time off you know i think it's the manner in which you ask the question that could have came off a little bit more class uh, uh with, with a little bit more class more so than um being as tasteful as it was but i do agree with tim zoo as well he had absolutely nothing to do with that his fist did um the fact that he's uh destroying guys the no way fight was man dog if you have not seen tim zoo in no way you need to go and check that fight out bro it was a bad banger bro because they they banged each other up the entirety of the whole entire fight um heavy blows heavy haymakers they didn't dodge each other they stayed in front of each other the whole day um defense did prevail for tim zoo his power also prevailed it was a great fight so i mean you can just understand that people want to see tim zoo in a, a high stakes fight versus J uh jamel charlo i don't know bro when you ask me can charlo win this i do believe he have a legitimate opportunity to win this do you, if you ask me if tim zuka win this i also think he have a legitimate chance of winning this um i just think that if charlo gets trapped on those ropes it could be a hard long night for him pause um also think that if uh Tim Zoo walks into this fight taking Charlo lightly, thinking that it's just all bark. He's going to be in for a rude awakening. Um, so it, it's, it's one of those fights for me where I just want to see what happens. This is one of those that's just stuck in my head right now. And I wanted to give you guys uh, some footage of these dudes talking to each other um, and kind of just play off of the thrill that this fight could be happening next. All right. But this is the RTH podcast. I'm your host, Nephew, and I'm signing out. Y'all take it easy, bruh. Peace.